Hi, and welcome to a very short introduction. From ancient Greece to branding, globalisation to Homer, and logic to fashion, we'll showcase a concise and dynamic insight into a range of diverse topics for wherever your curiosity may lead you. So here is today's very short introduction. My name is Julia Simner, and I'm a professor of neuropsychology at the University of Sussex in the south of England. I am the director of the Multisense Lab, which is a group of researchers who work together towards a better understanding of unusual sensory differences. So we're interested in people who experience their five senses in unusual ways. My VSI is a very short introduction to synesthesia. Synesthesia is a relatively rare sensory difference experienced by at least four to five percent of the population and potentially more. I say potentially more because it's an umbrella term for many different types of experience and we think that there may be between one to two hundred different types of synesthesia at least. But in general people with synesthesia experience a kind of merging of their senses. So hearing sounds might cause them to see coloured photisms, so coloured flashes in the visual field. Or hearing words and reading words might cause them to experience sensations of taste in the mouth, flavours, complex flavours. So, for example, hearing my name, Julia, might cause them to sense uh, orange fruit sweets in the mouth. And these sensations are incredibly real, incredibly valid and vibrant, just as real as usual sensations in the outside world. But for synesthetes, they're caused by unusual triggers, triggers from a different sense. So I first heard the term synesthesia as far back as 1994. I was a graduate student at the University of Toronto in the linguistics department and somebody had posted a note on the notice board and that note said, can you help? I see letters and numbers in colours. What is this? Please get in touch. As a graduate student, I'd never heard of this. I thought it was hugely unusual. I had no idea what this note even meant. But I was lucky enough to be taught by a Professor Ron Smythe, who knew immediately and was able to tell me that this person simply had synesthesia. He contacted her and he reassured her that all is well and that this is a normal variation in the way that individual people experience the world. I next heard the term synesthesia in 2002 when a colleague of mine at the University of Sussex approached me about a case. He had been contacted by a man called James Wanerton, who is now the president of the UK Synesthesia Association. And James Wanerton tastes words. So for James, every word he hears, reads, thinks about even, or says, floods his mouth with a sensation of taste. And he is the man who experiences my name, Julia, as orange fruit sweets. At the time, nobody really knew anything about this. There wasn't even a name for what James was experiencing. So Professor Jamie Ward and I ran a whole raft of tests on James Wanerton to show that his experiences are valid, they are systematic, so it's not just any old word with any old taste, but there are very fine-grained rules that James is not aware of which allow his synesthesia to associate certain words with certain tastes. And importantly, we've also been able to show that there is a reason for this, there is a cause for this in James Wanerton's brain. Indeed, the brains of all people with synesthesia are very subtly different. They're different in the way that separate parts of the brain come to communicate with each other. So, for example, in James's case, there is much more activity in the taste cortex of the brain compared to other people. And there are also other differences, for example, in the thickness of the grey matter in certain sensory areas in the brains of synesthetes. Again, all normal variations across people in sensory experiences, making synesthetes just part of a continuum of sensory experiences that run from cross sensations to segregated sensations that most people experience. So I mentioned before that there are many different types of synesthesia and so let's just run through a few of them. 
I've said already that if you have synesthesia, you might hear colours. The sound of the oboe might be blue. C sharp might be red. If you're a synesthete, you might taste words. Julia might taste a fruit sweet. If you're a synesthete, you might also instead see time mapped out in space. For example, you might see January on the left of space with months flowing round in a kind of running track shape. Alternatively, if you're a different kind of synesthete, you might hear motion. So moving your hand in front of your eyes might make a whooshing sound, even if there's no actual sound created by the movement of your hand through the air. Alternatively, different kinds of synesthetes can taste colours. Chicken might taste blue and bread might taste yellow. One of my favourite types of synesthesia is one that is not necessarily sensory. In this type of synesthesia, called personification synesthesia, letters trigger not colours but complex personality types. The letter A might be a caring mother, B and C might be mischievous children, D might be a young man setting out in the world. The whole alphabet or letters or days of the week are a cast of characters which the synesthete has not invented themselves but which has emerged in their consciousness over time as a result of differences in the structure and function of their brains. And all of these types of synesthesias, although relatively rare, are now fairly well understood and simply part of the tapestry of normal human sensations. Now, we know that synesthetic sensations develop early on in childhood. We've recently screened over 3,000 children between the ages of 6 and 10 to identify the synesthetes from among them. We gave them a test for synesthesia. And then we were able to show how synesthesia influences their school attainment, their personality, their well-being, and so on. And it turns out that synesthesia does have an impact. It can make them more creative, but potentially a little more anxious. Although it also tends to make them better in school in areas such as numerosity and vocabulary. So what would I like someone to know about synesthesia? Well... If you don't have it, I'd like you to know it exists, it's valid, and it's real enough to be seen very clearly on brain scans. And if you do have synesthesia, I'd like to let you know that you are of course a normal part of the human continuum, but that your associations are rather rare and rather special. <laughs>